I'm going to break this more advanced collision detection tutorial into two separate parts. The object of the exercise here is to make the arrow shoot across the screen until it strikes the target object, at which point the words bullseye will appear above it. The arrow will of course hold position. I'm also going to show you a way to restore the arrow to its starting point without having to manually reset its Z coordinate. So without further ado, let's open our Expresso Editor. The first node that we require is a time node. So we'll just go to our menus and we'll select that down there. At the moment it has a time output port, but I'm going to delete this one and replace it with a frame output port. Just do that there. And the frames we're referring to come directly from the timeline. So as soon as we run this, the time node receives the frames and it can then output them from the port that we've set up there. The next thing we need to do is bring in a math add. So we'll just come down to our calculate math. And it's already set up for us, which is perfect. So now we can plug our frame output from the time node into the input there. The next thing we need is our arrow. So we'll go up and drag that in and we need to output its position Z. We'll select that there, and then we can plumb this in, when we've made this a little bit bigger, we can plumb this into the second input of the math node. And we're now adding the frame value to the position Z of the arrow. And if we just bring the arrow in again, we can demonstrate exactly what happens. So at the input stage here, we'll set up our position Z, and then we'll plumb in the output from the ad, run the timeline and show you exactly what happens. The arrow accelerates away and it will keep on travelling into infinity. At this point we need to reset the arrow so we'll just move this out of the way and we'll select the arrow again and then change its position Z back to minus 400 meters and restore its start position. You can see where this reset's going to come in useful. Okay, we've got it that far. The next thing we need to worry about is our collision. So we bring in a collision node. And at this stage, we need to make our arrow node a little bit bigger and add an object port, which we can then plug into the collision detections object one. So what does the arrow need to collide with? Well, obviously it's the target. So we'll drag that in there and add an object output port, plug that one into object two. So now we're sensing for a collision between our arrow and our target. Now when that happens, we need the arrow to hold position. And the way we're going to achieve this is by using a freeze node. So we'll just bring that one in. New node Expresso General freeze node. And if we have a look at this one, we've got a switch input port and a value input port. The switch is a boolean operation and basically when that receives a number one it will force the freeze node to continuously output the value that happened to be in it at that moment in time. On the other hand if it receives a zero it will allow a constant stream of values to pass through the node. You can think of it as being a bit like a numerical dam. So we'll need to set this up so that when the arrow is in free flight the switch of the freeze node receives a zero and therefore allows the arrow to continue flying through space. When the arrow strikes the target, the switch will receive a number one. The freeze node will output the current Z position of the arrow and therefore make it come to a complete standstill. Let's start getting this wired up. The first thing we need to do is take the output of our collision node and wire it into the switch of our freeze node and we'll take the output of our math add and plug it into our freeze nodes value. We'll just swap these two ports over. That makes things a bit tidier. Let's put the output into there and let's see if this actually does work. And the arrow holds its position. So you can see that that works perfectly well for us. Let's just have a quick look at what we've actually done. We've taken the time from the timeline and we've added it to the position Z of the arrow. This value has been taken from the output of the add and placed into the value of the freeze. It's then been output to the position Z of the arrow. 
and all the time the arrow is in free flight, it's not a problem. We've also wired the arrow and target objects into the collision node to check to see whether there's actually been a collision between them. And if there has been a collision, we've output a value of 1 to the switch, thus forcing the freeze node to continuously output the current Z position of the arrow, causing it to come to a standstill. So that's got us halfway. And that concludes the first part of this tutorial. So I'll see you very soon in part two, when we'll make the words bullseye appear above the target, and then we'll show you how to reset the arrow to its start position without having to worry about doing this manually.